So I can see that this is a really incredible audience. You know, there's a lot of friends and colleagues that I recognize here today. And so I do really want to thank everyone for taking the time out of your personal life to really come out here and explore this technology. Now, before I get into the demo, I do want to address the question of why robotics? Why adopt robotic technology? And this is a question that I'm posed pretty often from a personal standpoint. You know, I trained at USC under Pat Shea and Frank Acosta, and for MIS, we would use navigation, and for open cases, we would use freehand technique. For my postgraduate fellowship with Larry Lenke, same thing. If it was an open case, we used freehand technique, and it was safe, uh, fast, and very effective. But when I was over there, I also had the fortune of training under Ron Lehman as well, who's going to be one of our faculty that you'll meet tomorrow, and being introduced to robotics. Now, the really convincing thing wasn't a particular moment or a case or surgery. It was actually Ron himself. Now, like many of you, I consider Ron Lehman to be an excellent surgeon, right? one of the best. If you were to compare him to a random sample of spine surgeons across the country, the gap with which how much better he is than everyone else is very high. And yet I saw him adopt and promote robotics with the accurate belief that robotics makes everyone better at spine surgery. And this comes at a great personal cost to him because obviously if everyone is better at spine surgery, it only decreases the gap at how much better he is than everyone else. But he did it anyway because he was right. Navigated spinal robotics is a game changer and a paradigm shift and it will really change how we do spine surgery for years to come. And I hope that this demo, in addition to a lot of the talks that we have for you tomorrow, is gonna to show you that and convince you that as well. Now, uh, to get you oriented here, this is the Mazor X Stealth Edition, the robotics platform. It is bed mounted, and there is a mount to the patient's spine as well. And so all of this has been designed in mind with accuracy, but also, as all of you have in mind, patient safety. Once the robotics platform is uh, mounted to the patient, then the first step is essentially what's called a three-defined scan. A three-defined scan is a surface optical scan. The robotic arm has optical cameras in its forearm that takes five shots of the patient's anatomy and then reconstructs it, as you can see, into a finite element model. So the robot can actually see the patient and with that, it's able to calculate the most efficient movements from target to target. And from a patient safety standpoint, there are not any ever collisions um, as it moves from place to place. Now, once that uh, surface scan is done, then the next step is the snapshot. And you know, everyone here has been talking a lot about the marrying of Medtronic technologies, and I think this is probably one of the best examples of that. The robotic arm is a CNC machine. So it's the same arm that builds your cars, that builds airplanes, that builds the SpaceX rockets. So it's very accurate, very precise. But as a CNC machine, it knows where it is in three-dimensional space and what it's doing, but we can't see it. And so what the stealth navigation does is it marries these technologies together. So with this stealth navigation registration, the robotic arm knows its position in space. The stealth navigation now knows where its position is in space and can then demonstrate it for us as the surgeons so we can see everything that's going on. And this is really one of the best examples of utilizing all of the available Medtronic technologies for solutions platforms. Now once the snapshot is done and that's registered, the next step is called a draw spine. And essentially what happens is you're telling the robotics platform your region of interest. The solution software has the entire patient CT scan in its memory, and so by telling it your region of interest, it just increases, uh, or rather decreases the time with it to process the calculations. Um, after that then is the AP anthroscopy shot. So the difference, I think, between robotics and navigation is that any type of robotic solution is segmented. When you have navigation, it takes the entire spine into a single shape, Whereas with robotic technology, it segments out each particular bony anatomy, which means that when you're ready to put in your pedicle implants, you could have put in your grafts, you could have done your osteotomies, you could have corrected the spine. The patient's spine may have moved, 
and I can still use the preoperative CT scan that I had from the clinic to place my pedicle implants. And to be honest, all of my patients and my workflow is the utilization of preoperative CT. So patients come in to see me. If they're opting for surgery, then they get a CT scan, and then they show up the day of. They're positioned. It doesn't matter if their spine has moved, because now the software registers segment to segment. The first shot is an AP with this 3D marker. And really, to be honest, one of the unsung heroes of the Mazoric Stealth Edition is the software and the registration. With the AP and oblique shots, the intraoperative fluoro x-ray with the live in-situ patient anatomy is then registered to the 3D CT. And what happens is that each segment is built off and separated out into blocks. Now, when you look at an x-ray, your eyes can capture about 256 shades of gray. So when you're looking at an x-ray compared to a CT, that's all you have to compare. The software can detect 16 million shades of gray. So when it is looking at an x-ray, it is a vivid painting as it compares that x-ray to the vivid painting of the CT. And no matter if you're comparing robotics platforms or trying to figure out what technology you want, and you know, if you want to ignore what the arm looks like and all the lights and the bells and whistles, really the power behind the platform is its ability to do this accurately so that you can move on and actually accomplish your surgery. Once that registration is done, you'll be able to see here the spine is auto-segmented, and then as we move forward, this is the comparison of the intraop fluoro with the CT. Again, very accurate, and the benchmark and the bar that it has to meet is less than a millimeter of difference from fluoro to CT in comparison. We can go to the next slide. After that, then it's moving on to the placement of the implants. So if you can send it to the right L3, now again, one of the nice benefits of the robotic arm, and I think especially moving from a workflow, if many of you are very familiar with navigation or freehand technique or floral assist, with the robotic arm, the workflow um, and techniques are different, but it's still going to be in line with what all of us are used to. The first step is this outer cannula, and you can see here the navigated dilator, so you can see right on the screen, the navigated dilator is going down the pre-planned path of that teal screw. This confirms that we're on trajectory and that the robotic arm is where we want it to be. Next is the drill guide. I do everything on power. Um, power, I think, has a smoother delivery of force, but here we have, for example, uh, handles. And you can see here, as the drill goes down to drill the pilot tract, everything is perfectly coaxial to the plan. And so unlike, say, navigation, or if you're doing freehand technique, where oftentimes the concern is um, an ice cream coning or a ruining of the bone, the robotic arm guides you down that path. Tapping is optional. Um, we have the ATS system here, but if you do tap, you can see here the tap is also navigated, so you can check your depth and make sure you're along trajectory. But if you're using the ATS system, which is the all-tap screw, again, it's designed to have a very aggressive um, design and so no tap is needed. And you can see here again, the screw going perfectly down the pre-planned path. Again, I do everything on power, so this is uh, shaved seconds, but it also uh, saves my joints. But you can see here, directly in line with that path, once the screw is down, the driver is removed. And can you go ahead and clear the arm? Now again, what's really remarkable about this system is that it understands where everything is in three-dimensional space, especially with, for example, if you're doing MIS and the towers are coming up, it's coming up and above the towers because, again, it understands where everything is in three-dimensional space. It's a lot of technology. It's a lot of ingenuity. But at the end of the day, the way it was designed was to fit into your own workflow and to help you do surgery better. So. Um, Thank you for your time, and I hope uh, you'll take uh, an opportunity to check out the expo and see how hopefully this technology can help you uh, do surgery better and safer for your patients. So thank you.